morning to you today. It's an unusually warm day for January here in eastern Michigan. And I wanted to say a few things to Christians today. I never know who exactly is listening and uh, don't really need to know. I assume many of the people who listen to the words I have to say are uh, Christians. But you may or may not be a Christian, but I wanted to speak more particularly to Christians who think about their witness in the world, their testimony before people who are not Christians. I think one of the areas where we find uh, ourselves very discouraged at times is in this area of having any kind of real impact on the people around us as Christians. We have our beliefs in Jesus, we've committed our life to Jesus, and we belong to him. We've been saved and baptized and filled with his spirit. And we wonder, though, as we mix with other people who make no claim to follow Jesus or to perhaps just have a very loose connection with religion, we wonder sometimes if we really have any impact on their lives at all. We, I think, can easily feel frustrated and discouraged about this matter because it seems as though people go on their own way and do what they want to do. But I want to read something that I found uh, striking again, though I've read it many times. In Matthew's Gospel, if you want to look there in Matthew chapter 5, in this wonderful portion, which has been dubbed the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus talks about the impact of those who follow him on the lives of those who haven't yet followed him. He says this, and I'm sure this will sound familiar to many of you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt lost its taste, how shall saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives to light, light to all who are in the house. There is Jesus comparing us to salt and light, and I want you to think about that again. Your life as a follower of Jesus is radically different by its very nature, by your commitment to Jesus, than those around you assuming those around you are not Christians. Your values, your beliefs, your thinking are altogether different. Yes, you live in this world, but you are clearly, as they say, not of this world. You and I are very different indeed. We have, again, a different orientation towards life. We believe as Christians that as we have received Jesus, his spirit has come into us. The kingdom of God is now within us. And we have a whole new orientation to things. Now this plays out somewhat differently with different Christians as to how, again, it expresses itself. But we are now swimming in a different direction. We are going now against the current of this world. And that is to, by its very nature, cause disturbance. You will cause disturbance. He says you're like salt, the salt of the earth. And salt is curative. It has this stinging quality, but it also has this healing quality to it. And our very presence, I want you to think about that, not even so much in your words, so your words are important, it's vitally important, what you say and what you don't say. Your very presence has a curative, stinging, preservative, healing quality to it. When you come into a room as a believer in Jesus, your very presence says something. Who you are is as important or more important than what you say. Who you are, 
and people soon find out who you are and what you believe and what you stand for or what you at least claim to stand for which is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You are very different and your presence again is like salt and salt is needed to address the corruption of society. You have a necessary presence in society and that presence is oftentimes rejected because it makes people very uncomfortable. Notice Jesus doesn't say you're the sugar of the world, sweet all the time, always talking about that which is uh, loving and kind and never addressing the concerns, the problem of sin at times. He doesn't say you're the sugar, you're the saccharin of society, but you're the salt of society, and that is what is needed in your life, those around you. They need healing. They need, again, a curative quality. They need to know that there is more to this life and that Jesus Christ is the answer to the problems of their life. Also, he says with that, you're the light. And he says again to us that we are not to be inconspicuous, but we are to be rather conspicuous. We are to be obvious and easily seen. Not obnoxious. I think this is where so many of us fail because we are so visible, we become annoying. We become loud and, um, what's the word, obstreperous? Is that the right word? where we are, again, pushing our way through and not listening to anyone, and we are forcing ourselves into situations. He's not saying be obnoxious. He's saying, rather, be visible, like light. And no one lights a light, a little lamp. Back then it was a little oil lamp. And he says no one puts a, a little lamp on the floor then covers it up with a bushel or a basket. It makes no sense to do that because all that's going to do is shroud the light. Why would we do that, he says. Rather, put your light, put that lamp, in our case it would be a little lamp, electric lamp, put it on the table, put it on a stand, right there in the middle of the room, and let it light up the room. Isn't that beautiful? You are that lamp, Jesus says. Be that lamp. Be that light. Be like that city that's on a hill. Again, shine. What is really happening in these circumstances is that the Spirit of God is shining through you. The Spirit of God is illuminating the circumstances, the problems, the rustlings, the sin. It illuminates the whole context. And this is a good thing. Jesus says you are the light. And the reason we're the light is because he is the light. His light is shining through you. I think so much of the time, again, we're thinking, how can I be the light? You don't have to be the light. You need to let God shine through you. Again, you're very position as a Christian, your very beliefs, your patterns of living, demonstrate to other people you are not a part of the darkness. It's always interesting to me, I can remember even as a boy, wondering why certain places were so poorly lit. You know, you'd pass through a bar. I can remember like walking in a bowling alley and there was a, a bar area to the bowling alley. And I was always intrigued by the darkness in the bar. Why was it always dark? Why didn't they turn the lights on in there? They didn't want the lights on. And again, the world prefers the darkness. It flees from the light. So we can't accept, expect that we're going to always be received. In fact, this is why we are persecuted. This is why we are ostracized at times. Again, and I'm stating the obvious, many of you already know this, but this is why we're pushed aside. This is why we're passed over. This is why we're rejected, even by loved ones, family members, 
because we are not a part of the scene. We represent Jesus Christ and we shine. And Jesus, I think, is saying to us, don't flee from that. This is the reality of who you are now as you follow me. He was rejected and you will find rejection by family members and loved ones. That does not mean, again, that you've done anything wrong. It might mean that you've done everything right. But this is our calling to be light in this world. And God will have his way through your life as you remain true to him. When you've got nothing else to say to people, when you've prayed and prayed and prayed, just remain as salt and light, as healing, as preserving, as illuminating as God would have you be. Blessings to you today. And may those words uh, somehow benefit you today. If you like what I have to say, again, hit like and subscribe so you can see all the videos I have. Again, God bless you.